Okay, so this is the Visual Studio environment. As we've mentioned already, you have the Solution Explorer over here off to the side here. You have your, your output window down here. And here we have a little bit of a welcome screen here that will also have our recent projects. We can start a new project. We can open a project. Uh, we can have different articles, different help that we, we need for Visual Studio we can get from here. We're going to do a very simple Hello World application. And this Hello World application will be command line based. So we're going to use this as a way to, uh, to not only le learn the different features of Visual Studio and get our feet wet, but also to do our one and only command line application in this course uh, right now. So the way things work is that, like I said earlier, you're going to create a solution. So what we do is we start by going to File. We go to New, and this is what's important here is that we have New, and then you'll have New Project, but then below it you might have New Website. Now this is a heads up for when you get into the web development with ASP.NET. You want to choose New Website for when you do a website. Okay? You, stick, you, keep, you do New Projects for when you create desktop applications. Now you still could do a website by doing New Project, but it gets very complicated because it adds in all these extra files that you don't need for a website and it can get very frustrating trying to, trying to figure out what's going on and what's going wrong with your website when you didn't need half the junk that was auto-generated for it. So websites for websites, projects for everything else. That's the way to think of it. So when you want to create a new project, you go File, New Project, and a window will pop up with a whole slew of information here. A lot of things that pop up here. Now we start on the left hand side we want to make sure that Visual C Sharp is highlighted because we want to make sure that in this list here that Visual C Sharp is the language that is chosen. You may have chosen to install everything and so you might see Visual Basic as another option uh, but we're going to be doing in this course Visual C Sharp so we want to make sure that Visual C, C Sharp is the option here. Now uh, in the top few op options here you see Windows Forms application for this one and only time we're going to choose console application and so we're going to choose console application because we're going to do a command line program here. Just our one and only one, just to get comfortable with Visual Studio and what, what's out there. So we choose console application, and then if we go to the bottom, we'll see name, and we'll give our project a name. And I'm going to call it Hello World. And I'm going to give it a location. So uh, you may want to put it in the location where you typically have your projects, your code, your homework, and whatnot. So I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to hit Browse. And I'm going to give it a home as well. So I just need a moment here. Okay. So I'm going to say select folder. Now, before I hit OK, there's a couple more checkboxes I'll talk about. So there's create directory for solution. Yep, I'm going to do that. I'm going to let it create a new directory for me on the file system. And add to source control. Now, if you have source control and you're, you started using stuff like maybe GitHub or, or anything like that, uh, you could link it with that. Uh, but we're not going to in this course. So that's another option as well. So we hit OK. And it starts auto-generating a bunch of things. right? And I know the code might be difficult to read, so let's expand that to 150% just to make it easier to read there. So let's look at our solution explorer onto the side here. And what we have here is we have Hello World, and you'll see a little icon that says C Sharp, so it's telling me that yes, it's a C Sharp program here. We have something called properties here. If I expand that, I have assembly information. So this is all configuration stuff related to the program that we're about to build. Uh, we don't typically have to hack this or edit this very often unless if there's something, you know, major with it that, that we want to get into. So I'm going to close this off and leave it. There's references. References tells me what frameworks I have brought in to this project. So I don't have to edit anything. It's just as I start using the word using, then I'll start seeing this list grow. There's app config. So app config is your configuration file. It's an XML based file. And you'll notice that a lot of the configuration you do is XML based. So any settings you have, right now I'm telling you I'm using .NET 4.0. Uh, 
Right? And so there's 4.5, of course, and other versions of .NET, but we're just starting with 4.0 here. You might have a different version on yours, uh, on your installation. Uh, so whatever it is, uh, you can configure and choose what version of .NET you want to use. You may have extra settings that you want to add in over here. Uh, when you get into web and doing ASP.NET, the file you'll have here is not app config, but web config web.config and so you'll have a lot of configuration there as well related to the website maybe you want to add security maybe you want to uh, connect uh, have your database connection information in that file there's a lot of options there uh, for you and finally the last one in this case is program.cs if I expand program.cs I'll see that I have a class called program and a method called main right all my listing of information is there Right? just like as I see in the code over here. So we'll start off by examining the code that's here and we're going to get this thing to run. That's going to be our primary goal here. So you'll notice that I have the word using at the top. So in the Java world you saw import, import Java util scanner for example. Right? We're going to use the word using instead. And you notice that we're using system, using system.collections.generic, using system.link.txt. A few common things that might be useful for your application at the command line that it auto generated after that we have a namespace namespace hello world I'm gonna get into namespaces in a future class so we'll leave that for now uh, but then I'll also get into class class program now notice that you know you're probably accustomed to seeing like public class something right and also for main public static void main you're probably accustomed to seeing that in Java right so We'll talk about public, private, and protected again in a future class. There are differences in the C-sharp world versus Microsoft world and all, uh, versus the Java world. And also, there are a couple of more that we're going to introduce that will make things a bit confusing. Right? So there's public, private, and protected in Java. They're also there in C-sharp, but there's two more. And there's a reason for those two more. We'll talk about that in a future class. And we'll talk about why we don't see public or private here by default, but you could put that in. Right? You could add public class program and public static void main. That'll do the same thing too. And another thing to note before we continue is that we have our properties over here off to the side. Because this is not a GUI based application, we don't care about this just yet. We're going to leave this alone. In our next application, we're going to get into it. We're going to actually play with this and, and do a lot of work on this side of things. But first thing, all we're going to do is, let's just get it to say hello world onto the screen. That's all we're going to do here. So, what we're going to do is, in Java, we would have said system.out.println, right? Well, in the C-sharp world, we say console.writeline. Or write, but we'll use write line. And let's just put hello world in there. So console.writeline. And if I want to run this thing and see what happens, there's a little start button here. Okay, so I can use this to start and run my program. So I'm going to click on the start button and it's going to compile and it changed. And it did something and it flickered back to here. And it made you wonder, well, did it run my program? The answer is yes, it did run the program. But here's what happened. It ran the program, it opened a it opened a command line window very briefly. It put hello world on the screen and it realized, oh I'm done with hello world. Okay, let's close the program back and go back to normal. So it executed, but that was it. There there was it was done and it went back to normal. So we need it to stay there long enough so that we as humans can read this. So we're going to add one more line of code and that is console.readkey and this command will ask for the user to enter a key before continuing. And so now if we run this again it'll pop this up hello world and it's kind of tough to for you guys to see at the back but you should see hello world on your screen in a command line browser or in a command line window and if I hit oh before I even hit anything notice bef behind it 
that my my view has changed. This is the debug view. We'll talk about this debug view in a second because we're going to add more to this code. But if I hit space or any key, it goes away and my view changes back to normal. Okay. So all we did now is we just got hello world to display. All right? Something very basic, so very simple. But let's get into doing a little bit more with this. Not much more, because there's only so much you can do with the command line before we actually get into cool things, but let's just add, you know, like int y equals 5. Maybe do a for loop, like for int i equals 0, i is less than 10, i plus plus. And maybe do a y equals y plus 2, or y plus equals 2. And I could run this, uh, but it won't really output anything. But what I want to do here is I want to demonstrate debugging to you. So what I could do is if I highlight a line or click on a line of code that I want to stop at, and I move all the way over to the side here, this little gray area, right? And I click here. So you notice that the line turns maroonish, right? Telling me that now it, there's a breakpoint here, meaning that when I run the program, it's going to stop the program here. Okay, so I can investigate the values of my variables, how thing, like how how uh, what what's there, what I should have there instead, you know, different things that we can do with it. And then I can continue stepping through the lines of code here, and we're going to learn how to do that right now. So the way we would do it is we hit our breakpoint there, we go ahead and hit the start, hit the play button as I like to say, and our code has turned yellow from maroon. I still have my output right here. I have hello world, but I'll take it away. And if we look down here, we have under locals, we have the value of our variables. Right now it has y, and it has y set to zero. And it tells me that it's an int. Okay? I could edit that value. So I can go to like y here, and I could set it to be like three. So then con from there on in, it'll continue on as y equals 3 until it gets overwritten, which is about which it's about to happen. Now, if I want to continue on in the code, up here, I have a few buttons here. I have, if I mouse over them, I have step into, I have step over, and I have step out of. And each of them has a significant meaning. So step into, we'll start with, start with that. What happens is that if this line of code was a method call, I could go inside the method. So that's what step into is all about. If I want to go inside the method and go line by line there, I can do so. It's not so good for something like, uh, well, in this case, console.writeline or in the Java world system.out.println, like going into a core system method. It doesn't work very well uh, because a lot of the debug information is hidden and we can't see it. But for any custom methods you create, it's great for walking into, right? So that's step into. The next one, which is probably the most common one, is step over, which means just go to the next line of code. Right? That's all it means. So we click on that. It went to the for loop, right? The third one is step out of. What this means is that if I'm in a method and I'm done with it, and it's basically saying finish off the rest of the, the rest, rest of the lines of code inside that method and exit out the method. So it's saying I'm done with the method, come out of it. Just finish it off whatever's there. Okay? So that's step out of. I think the most common one you'll use is step over and then step into. Those are the two most common ones you'll you'll use. There's another one which is actually if you click on any line of code and you right click, you can go run to cursor and it'll just continue on until it hits this line. So those are actually the four most common ones that are out there for debugging, but the most common ones are step into and step over. Those are the two most common ones. And you also have the stop button here, which means if you're done, you figure, like say you found an error, you know, great, I'm gonna stop there, edit my code, and hit run again as well. But those are the most common, most common uh, debugging abilities out there. 
So let's let it. Oh, and there's also continue. And essentially, that is just a simple hello world. What we're going to do next is we're going to a GUI based application. We'll get into the good stuff now. But I just want to start off by giving you some basic introduction to Visual Studio.